Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mr. Cones channel. I am your host, Mr. Cones, and today we are doing a deep dive into the MCU tier list world. This is my first live camera on the computer setup kind of deal, besides when I did an ice cream truck documentary watch on YouTube. So this will be interesting, but I think it will go well. So I just finished a rewatch with the girlfriend, with Mrs. Cones, so I'm pretty fresh, up to date on most of my MCU stuff. We got up to Black Widow, but I am a seasoned MCU watcher, and I'd like to think that I know my stuff. I got my Spider-Man hat on after all, so <laughs> let's just jump right into this. We'll start with whatever's first in line. Hop over to the main scene. I'm gonna try to do this live through OBS for the first time. Just kind of streamline the editing process, you know? Do it live. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, first up, we have Avengers Infinity War. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Easy god tier. I'm not gonna be too easy on all these, but Infinity War is god tier. It is just action, action, action. Character moments, character moments, character moments. Introduction to Thanos as like a true villain. I know he was introduced at the end of Avengers and showed up in Avengers 2 at the end in the post credit scene and in Guardians of the Galaxy, but this is where we first get our look at Thanos. I'd argue this is Thanos' movie. It's also interesting to the parallels specifically between Thanos and Thor. They both kind of have their own hero's journey. It is just a great movie all around and it's really the first time, honestly, where the heroes just get clapped at the end. <laughs> so that always is a huge twist to people who haven't seen it. And that is one of the many reasons why I think it's, it's God tier. As you can see, I have God tier, top tier, high tier, mid tier, low tier. I don't think there is a truly bad MCU movie. Even the lower ones that will be on this list aren't necessarily bad. They're just not as good as the other ones. Call me an MCU meat rider. I don't care. <laughs> it's just the truth. It's the truth! So Ant-Man, I really liked Ant-Man. It's that fun, wacky heist kind of vibe. I will probably put it into mid-tier though. It's not like game-changing. I know there's tons of drama behind the scenes. Edgar Wright was originally going to write and direct it, and then there was some drama, and then he dropped out. Ant-Man was actually supposed to be the first MCU movie before Iron Man, and then they were gonna have Ant-Man in the Avengers, and that just didn't work out. Creative differences, Edgar Wright wanted to do some crazy stuff. MCU does kind of have a cookie cutter must abide by these rules kind of structure so that it, every movie can fit within the story. And so things just kind of didn't work out, but I, I really like the Ant-Man movie. It's a heist, it's awesome. You get introduced to Louise, the best character in the MCU, TBH. It's all fun and games. So I'm gonna go mid-tier with Ant-Man. Black Panther. This is where I get controversial. I just don't think it's as good as a movie as everybody says. Now, hit dislike on the video. The engagement helps me either way. But I think that Black Panther has good moments. T'Challa vs. Killmonger on the waterfall when he comes, when, uh, when Killmonger comes back and demands a throne and they fight on the waterfall, that part's sick. The, the car chase, when they're, uh, I, I believe they're in Japan, but that whole car chase pretty goddamn awesome. But just throughout the movie, and specifically the third act, I just, I don't know, I, I just wasn't really digging it. I'm gonna put Black Panther on mid-tier. <laughs> this is gonna be very controversial. Hulk, as you know, low tier, just not the best. It's kind of interesting to re-watch it after watching She-Hulk, since Blonsky's in it, and they kind of give him some more backstory in She-Hulk. Not even backstory, actually, yeah, they do, because he kind of says he just, his motives, he just wanted to be a hero as well, essentially, without giving too many She-Hulk spoilers away. But it does give Hulk a little bit more perspective if you rewatch it now, later on. I don't know, it's, it's just, it's all right. It's cool that it was filmed in Toronto. I'm from Toronto, so in the final fight, there are some uh, some spots that you can you can tell it's Toronto, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But Hulk is low tier. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, this might be controversial as well. God tier. I love Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It 
just has so much heart. Peter Quill and Yondu, that whole dynamic of the father-son thing, very awesome. The big reveal that Ego's just been clapping cheeks around the galaxy and killing his children. Oh my god. Like, it, it's just, it's crazy. And, and I think it gets a lot of hate. Everyone loves Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Don't get me wrong, I love it too. But I'd have to put Guardians of the Galaxy 1 in top tier. Just because I think Guardians of the Galaxy 2 just has that emotional depth to it. It has it, but not to the extent. It's really just the Yondu, Peter Quill dynamic that really gets me. And Mantis is a cool character too. So I like that they introduced her in that. Guardians of the Galaxy 1 is top tier, I'd say. When that first came out, everyone's like, whoa. Marvel gets one hit with the Avengers and now they think that they can have a talking tree and a raccoon? Oh my god, Marvel's dying, it's going downhill. But that couldn't have been further from the truth. Everybody loves Guardians of the Galaxy. You got Groot, you got Rocket, Drax, Gamora, Star-Lord, Yondu with his whistle arrow. Oh my god, very, very cool. I do love Adult Groot. I wish Adult Groot would kind of make a comeback. We seem to be stuck in Teen Groot era, but pretty damn good. All right, so Captain America, the first Avenger. I am going to be putting him in high tier. I say high tier because it's nothing too, too game changing, but it's not bad. I'd say that it's just a very nice upper level. Like it's not mid, it's still a great movie I'd say. It's so much fun to watch Steve Rogers be introduced into the MCU. L later down the line, you know how important Captain America is to so much that, that happens later on. like. Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Infinity War and all that jazz. They He's very integral to the MCU. Him and Tony. And then second Thor, I, I'd argue. But the first Captain America movie, just showing off his character, his good nature. When he jumps on the grenade. If you were to put this movie in mid-tier, just think of the scene where he jumps on the grenade. Bump that up. Bump that up to high tier. That is, It's just a good movie. And then Peggy... And him, their whole dynamic, him saying he's got to put it down in the water, and that he better make the date. Ugh. There's just so much to it, and I, I love it. And I, I love period pieces. Just knowing that it's all taken place in the 40s is awesome. So yeah, I'd, I'd go high tier with Captain America, First Avenger. Captain Marvel, this might be controversial as well. I'd put it as high tier. I really like the Captain Marvel movie. A lot of people shit on it. A lot of people don't like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. That's a whole thing as well that I'm not going to get into. I personally like it. The only thing that I don't like honestly like about it is the explanation to Nick Fury losing his eye. I think they could have done that a bit better. But overall, I, I love the Captain Marvel movie. You got Phil Coulson coming back. Papa Phil. So that's always cool. You have Samuel L. Jackson de-aged and it looks pretty damn flawless if you ask me and the introduction of the scrolls there's just a lot of fun to be had in the captain marvel movie i think it gets a lot of hate for no reason tbh but you know what are you gonna do all right dr strange so dr strange i'd put in high tier as well it's very nice you can argue that it's actually more of a character piece up until like the third act it's just it's about stephen strange and how much of an asshole he is, <laughs> and how he has to be humbled and learn through different ways that he can't always be the hot, hottest shit in the room, you know? It's just, it's nice, I really like it, the effects are cool. When it first came out, seeing it in IMAX, breathtaking. Absolute euphoric experience, it was tons of fun. Spider-Man Homecoming. I'd put Spider-Man Homecoming high tier as well. It's tons of fun, actually, you know what? I put it top tier. I really like Spider-Man Homecoming. I like that he's got the homemade suit. I've cosplayed as it. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool if you ask me. But just the dynamic of just our introduction into Peter Parker's world. You get a little tease in Civil War, but in this, you truly get to see him for who he is. You get to meet his friends like Ned, and you get to see him just being on his, really his first big adventure, fighting the Vulture. I, I'd say it's top tier. Civil War? God tier. Easy God tier. My friends and I in college, the fan club, 
we would just recite this over and over and over. It's probably the movie I've personally seen the most. I believe it's my favorite MCU movie, Civil War. I just love it so much. It's so many quotable moments. The introduction of Spider-Man, Black Panther, you get to see Giant Man, and then the whole airport fight happens and you think, okay, like this is the whole climax of the movie. This is what it's all been building to. And then you look at your watch and you realize there's an hour left and you're thinking, oh crap, this is just the end of the second act. What's the third act going to be? And it's less spectacle, but it's more of an emotional battle with Bucky and Tony and Steve and just the whole drama that does have repercussions in the MCU by Cap leaving the shield, Tony and Cap not talking anymore, Bucky losing his arm, having to go back to Wakanda to heal. It's just an integral piece of the MCU, and it, it's my favorite MCU movie, to be honest, is uh, Captain America's Civil War. All right, I'm gonna skip over the TV shows for now. We'll do that last. Spider-Man Far From Home, I'm gonna put it top tier as well. A lot of people have hot takes about Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I love him. I think he's great. I think Andrew Garfield's great. I think Tobey Maguire is great. But throughout all the MCU Spider-Man movies, I think they're just solid all around, you know? And as you can see, huge Spider-Man fan. And Far From Home's just fun. You know, when I rewatched it with uh, with Mrs. Cones, she was loving it too. You know, Jake John Hall's kind of goofy with his fishbowl head, but it's a lot of fun. And it's nice to see him kind of head into the trajectory that he continues on into in No Way Home, where he's kind of becoming his own person, essentially. He, he's realizing that I'm not going to be the next Iron Man. I'm going to be me, the next Spider-Man. And I really like that about the film. So I'm going to put Far From Home at top tier. Thor Ragnarok, easy god tier. Reinvented Thor. I have hot takes about Thor, which we'll get to when Lo Thor Love and Thunder pops up. <laughs> Honestly, like the first two Thor movies, they're all right. Not the most fun. The first Thor, I say, is better than the second Thor. We'll get to that. But Taika Waititi brought Thor up to where he needed to be. I think it's the perfect mix of, of humor and serious tone. It does kind of get out of hand later on, as we will see, <laughs> but what are you gonna do? All right, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I'm putting Ant-Man and the Wasp as mid-tier. I think that Ant-Man and the, I think the first Ant-Man is better than Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's not as gripping as some of the other ones higher up in the list. I know it'd be controversial that Captain Marvel's above it, <laughs> but in my opinion, Captain Marvel's a lot of fun. It's like Dragon Ball, she's like Dragon Ball Z. She's like Goku powering up and all that. But for Ant-Man and the Wasp, I, I do like how the villain isn't really a villain. She's just like, yo, I got screwed over. I'm trying to fix this before I just vaporize into nothing. But yeah, not, not much to say. Ant-Man and the Wasp, I put it as mid-tier. All right, Avengers Age of Ultron. I'm gonna put Age of Ultron at top tier. This is also controversial. I think Age of Ultron, and I, I believe this is common opinion, is now better after experiencing the whole Infinity War saga than it was when it initially came out. Because when you watch it, it is a lot of setup. It's setting up Wakanda, it's setting up like Thor going off into space to find Infinity Stones, it's setting up all this stuff. It kind of loses itself in that. But if you look at it as a whole, the MCU narrative as a whole, which I believe you should, because it, it is essentially one TV show and each movie is a different episode. I like to look at it that way. And if you look at it that way, it is very, very good <laughs> once you see the rest of the MCU. So I understand why people didn't really like it or they thought it was kind of mid when it first came out. But later on down the line, I think I think it, they hit the upgrade button hell amount of times on Age of Ultron. And I, I think the later half of the MCU really bump helps bump it up looking back. First Iron Man movie. Boom, God tier. You know Iron Man started it all. When the first movie ends and he declares he's Iron Man, hadn't been done before, everyone thinks, what? Like, it's secret identity, what? what? What happened to all that? It's gone, he doesn't have one. Which is pretty, It, was, it when it happened, it was, it was jaw dropping. I, I, this is one of my favorite theater experiences. I remember seeing it a very, very, very long time ago. And I still remember seeing it, as well as Iron Man 2, which we're gonna get into right now, which I believe this is controversial. Mid-tier. It's not low-tier. A lot of people put Iron Man 2 at low-tier, but I think they forget that Iron Man 2 
He wants his bird. He wants his bird. And it's got Justin Hammer, which, like, they better bring him back for Armor Wars, in my opinion. But Iron Man 2, I think it's a lot of fun. It's got the suitcase suit up. <laughs> Introduction of War Machine. Oh my god, even the last fight when they're in that dome with the cherry blossoms all around them and they're using the laser and... I don't know, Iron Man 2, I, I just don't think it, it's as bad as everyone says, especially as, after re-watching it a few months ago. I think it's definitely not low tier, I, I think it's mid tier. Alright, end game. Boom, smack that, right at god tier. End game, I'd say it's a little weaker than Infinity War, but for what it is, it is amazing. It is made to be the end cap, essentially, on the first chunk of the MCU. The first, like, ten years of it. It wraps up everything with a nice little cute bow perfectly. I'd say it's, it's much more character-driven than Infinity War. Infinity War is very action, non-stop. Endgame has a lot of slow spots, which I personally like. Gives you more time to just be with the characters and to see their thought processes, what they're thinking, how they're feeling. It's it's much slower, and I like that. So, Endgame's definitely god tier for me. All right, first Thor movie. I'm putting it mid. It's fun. It's fun, let's be real here. When he's at the pet shop and he asks for a horse and they say they only have dogs and he says, can I, got one big en can I get one big enough to ride? Like, that, that's good. Classic fish out of water, coffee cup. <laughs> get me another. You know, the whole nine yards. It's just fun. It's a fun movie. And it's cool that they uh, introduce Hawkeye in it as well, which I have takes on Hawkeye. I think he is the most underrated Avenger of all time. Thor definitely mid, not low tier like some people expect it to be or say it to be. Second Thor though, that's low tier. It is beefed up a bit and enhanced by Endgame. You know, Thor going back to Dark World to talk to his mother and get the ether from from Jane but it's that's not enough it's not enough it's not like Age of Ultron where the future movies buff it up a lot it only gets buffed up a little you see that one part in in the movie where they were to go back in Endgame and you think like aha that's cool Thor's behind that pillar right there <laughs> like like that's that's all Endgame really adds to it but it's not bad like it's still enjoyable you have Frigga's funeral and Loki just being a little shit the whole time it's it's a lot of fun. So it's it's not bad. This is like this is the worst it gets in the MCU and it's not even bad. Iron Man 3. I love Iron Man 3. Directed by Shane Black, the Christmas movie king. Iron Man 3, it's like the only Christmas thing in the MCU besides Hawkeye and it's awesome. I I really like Iron Man 3. I like that he's stripped of his suit. It's especially it's essentially Iron Man Homecoming, you know? Like he gets stripped of his suit goes through the whole journey of I'm not the suit I'm me like Iron Man's not the suit the Iron Man's me it's it's great I I really like Iron Man 3 it gets trashed on a lot but I really like it I remember sitting in theaters though when I was a kid and when he gets the arc reactor taken out all I could think of after the movie was like that's not Iron Man why well, they're taking his thing away like blah 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 but then it hit me later on that that is the whole point of the movie is that he is, this doesn't make him Iron Man. The arc reactor doesn't make him Iron Man. It's him that makes him Iron Man. And so I have a, I have a newfound respect, I'd say, for Iron Man 3 since growing up. All right, Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Boom, God tier. This is as good as it gets for MCU, like spy thriller, hand-to-hand -hand combat, suspense, action. Russo Bros, everything they touch turns to gold. As you can see, every single movie that they've done so far in this list is in God tier. It's, it's amazing. I love The Winter Soldier. The big reveal that it's Bucky under there, I personally didn't know until I saw it in theater, so I was taken back by it. And then the whole highway fight, when they find Zola and Zola comes back, because he's a cool character. It's, it's just so good. The introduction of Falcon? Oh my god. Oh my god. Easy god tier. Easy god tier. Alright, first Avengers. I'm putting the first Avengers in top tier. Now, some people put this god tier. I put it top tier. I just think if you rewatch it, it kind of shows its age. And I'm just trying to be real here. When you rewatch the first Avengers, it kind of shows its age. And... The hype doesn't truly start until, like, the last half hour of the movie, in my opinion. 
It's still a great movie for what it is. But I think just the newer iterations of the Avengers, like Endgame and Infinity War, just take the whole concept to the next level. I, 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 I try to look objectively. I'd rather watch Infinity War and Endgame than the first Avengers movie. And it, I'm not saying it's bad. It's still top tier, but just not God tier in my opinion. All right, next movie, Black Widow. I'm putting Black Widow at mid. Now, it was enjoyable. This was like the first COVID Marvel experience where you'd buy it on Disney Plus and then watch it at home. And so it was kind of weird, but this movie was late. A lot of people say this as well. Black Widow should have been like a phase one movie showing off just her origins before Avengers because they kind of hit everybody with it except her and Hawkeye in, the, in phase one at least. And so it, it does feel more like a phase one movie while you're watching it. There's a lot of stupid stuff that happens, like when she falls off the building and she hits like 80 things on the way down and survives. Like there's just some things like that that kind of take you out of it. When the car crash happens and she's totally fine. She's, she's got some pretty thick plot armor in this. And I don't know if I'm too thrilled about the movie. I, I liked it. It was cool to see Hopper in it as Red Guardian. But I, I definitely say mid-tier for Black Widow. Now Shang-Chi? Easy top tier, maybe even god tier. If there was a middle section, I'd put it, I'd put it in that. Shang-Chi, fellow Toronto man, very cool. I loved this movie. It did feel like a phase one movie in the sense that it didn't feel connected to the wider MCU, which I really liked. You get the post credit scene with Captain Marvel and, and Bruce Banner, but besides that, it's pretty much its own thing. And I really liked that and I love the story and I love that he actually, as a child, spoilers, but he, he killed the, the guy. And so, <laughs> not many movies have the hero actually do dark stuff and then live through the consequences. A lot of heroes these days are very perfect. When in Shang-Chi, he's not, and I like that. All right, No Way Home, God tier, in my opinion. Some people shit on it. I really like it. Top MCU theater experiences is like Infinity War, Civil War, Endgame, and No Way Home. They're all on the same level for me at least. No Way Home just did it right. Just think about the concept and they pulled it off. And now Spider-Man ends, spoilers, in a state that sets him up perfectly to be that lonesome Peter Parker where everything he touches gets destroyed. That, that, that's like the best version of Peter Parker, in my opinion, where it's just non-stop getting hit down, hit down, hit down, hit down, but he gets back up every time. And I think the future of Spider-Man is going to be awesome. And No Way Home sets it up perfectly. And you get closure on Andrew Garfield and Toby. He catches Gwen. Oh my god, it, it's just so cool to see them all on screen together, even though it got leaked. I was telling myself, it's not true, it's not true, even though I knew it was true. But it was still awesome when it came out in theaters. Easy god tier for No Way Home. Alright, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I have to put this as mid-tier. This is not my favorite movie. I don't think that it's much of a Doctor Strange movie. I think this is common like common thought. This is what the hive mind thinks as well. That it's it's much more of like a Wanda movie than a Doctor Strange. I'm pretty sure actually that Benedict Cumberbatch said that it's not very much a Doctor Strange sequel as well. It just, it feels like it kind of goes everywhere. It's got the cool cameos with the Illuminati, but I don't know. I, I was looking forward to Scott Derrickson's sequel that was gonna feature Nightmare and more of a backstory to Doctor Strange. But Sam Raimi, very talented. Did the Spider-Man stuff, lots of horror stuff, but I don't know. I, I, I just think it's very mid-tier in my opinion, and I felt that way leaving the theater as well. Now, Eternals. This is also a hot take. I think Eternals is high tier. And actually, I think Ant-Man's high tier. Ant-Man's high tier. I'm switching it up. I'm switching it up. I can't stand seeing Ant-Man on the same level as Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. Ant-Man's high tier. Sorry for the last minute adjustments. But Eternals, I really liked Eternals. My family who I saw it with hated it, but I really liked it. I thought it was cool, it was a new take. They did a decent job at introducing, I believe it's 12 new characters. And I, I don't know, I, it was cool to see the MCU do something different. A lot of the times people go, 
oh, the MCU needs to do something different. It's all the same. And then Eternals, I believe her name's Chloe, Chloe Zhao or something along those lines. She directed it. So she creates something different and everyone's like, ew, that sucked. But it's not even that bad. It's cool, in my opinion. I'm excited for the sequel. I like the uh, Makari, the speed the speedster. All right, last movie, Thor, Love and Thunder. This pains me. Thor and Captain America and Spider-Man, my top three Marvel characters. Thor is mid. I, this, this destroyed me. I was so excited. I just feel like Taika Waititi had Thor at a perfect level and then the, the Russo bros brought Thor to just an even more perfect level in Infinity War. And then kind of dumbed him down a bit in Endgame. But then Taika Waititi turned the dial up to 11 and shot Thor up into like Idiotsville, in my opinion. I saw a good video about how he's a, uh, a bimbo, or a himbo rather, which is a male bimbo. And <laughs> it was a TikTok about the bimbofica the himbification of Thor Odinson. And and the girl in the video goes over it pretty well, saying that they kind of make him a lovable idiot because he's new to Earth, and then serious because he's got stuff to do, and then a little funny in Ragnarok, and then a little more serious, or sorry, wrong way, a little more serious, and then they kind of dumb him down a bit in Endgame, and then dumb him up to 11 in Thor Love and Thunder. I thought Jane Foster was cool. I thought Thor was cool when he wasn't acting stupid, in my opinion. I thought there was too much Korg, and I hate that they cut Christian Bale's role to a minimum. I read an article that said they had to cut a bunch of stuff due to time constraints, like for theaters, but it makes zero sense to me because Endgame is like an hour longer than Thor Love and Thunder. And it's like one of the most successful movies of all time. So clearly time isn't an issue on the box office. And I don't know, I, they have scenes filmed of Christian Bale being cool as Gore the God Butcher, and they, it's cut. It exists, but it's, it was cut for, for unknown reasons. And so I don't know, I, I think it was mid. I left the theater with the same feeling I did with Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. I don't know, phase four just hasn't been too hot, I guess, with the movies besides Shang-Chi and No Way Home. All right, movies are done. Let's jump into the shows. Started off with WandaVision. I'm gonna say WandaVision's top tier. At the start, it's kind of weird. You're thinking, what is, what is this? What is happening? Towards the end, it gets awesome. The stakes are kind of high. She's enslaving a whole town. It's just, a, it's very intense. A lot of people feel ways about the Ralph Boner joke and the just battle at the end. Cause it's such a, like a intricate show and then it ends with this battle. And I think it like that, that's bound to happen. It's Marvel. So I try not to hate on it too much for doing that. But I, I think it's top tier. I think WandaVision was really, really good. I also think that Loki was top tier. I don't think any of the shows are God tier, but I think Loki was top tier as well. I loved that second last episode where they go beyond time and you see all the Loki variants. And seeing Owen Wilson, always a treat, always a pleasure. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I am going to put that at mid-tier. I really liked it. I thought they could have done more. Apparently there was a whole plot line surrounding a, almost like a chemical agent, like a toxin that was gonna be released by uh, that group, the bad guys. I don't even remember their names. And uh, it got cut apparently. This may just be a rumor, but I heard that it got cut because of COVID. And they thought, wow, this storyline is mirroring COVID. And we can't have this in our show. So a lot of it was cut. And a lot of it was changed last minute. And I think it kind of shows in, in the show. I, I, it's a good show. I love the Isaiah Bradley stuff. I love the Falcon stuff. I love the Winter Soldier stuff. I don't know, I just think it's not as good as some of the other shows. What if, I'm gonna put it low tier. I don't know, I, it just wasn't for me. I watched every episode. I liked when they teamed up at the end with their uh, Avengers team. I really liked the Doctor Strange episode. I believe it was episode four, three or four. I think that that was peak television in my opinion, but one, one episode being really, really, really awesome doesn't really 
bring it up too much. So I'm going to have to put what if as low tier. I don't know. Just wasn't for me. Moon Knight. I really liked Moon Knight. I'm going to put it as top tier just because Oscar Isaac's performance. Those scenes where he's Steven and then he just switches into Mark. Like all the time just seamlessly in out in out in out while the accents constantly change and there's no cutting it is awesome and i love his costume and i love like the lore that Khonshu, this god of the moon and all this is is running the show and and it's just so cool it's such an interesting concept and i love how it ended with with Khonshu making a deal with uh, his third personality i it's it's gonna be awesome for season two if they decide to do that i'm sure they will nothing announced yet but i'm hyped for that possible outcome all right so miss marvel i'm putting it at high tier to be honest i honestly didn't think i was gonna like it but as i was watching it it's it's just got this feel good vibe to it you know especially her family especially the dad like every time they were on screen and having a, like a heart to heart i don't know like it was just a good show in my opinion N nothing groundbreaking but for what it was, it, it was pretty good. I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was very wholesome. There were some cool action sequences. I wish your powers were the same as in the comics, but you know, what can you do? All right, Hawkeye. I'm putting Hawkeye, boom, top tier. I loved the Hawkeye show. A lot of people didn't like Kingpin at the end because they kind of nerfed him. But I don't know, I think that the Hawkeye show is so much fun. As you know, with my thoughts on Iron Man 3, I'm kind of a ho for that ho, ho, ho. You know, I love Christmas stuff. And so Hawkeye really does it for me. I love Kate Bishop as a character. I think she's got a nice future in the MCU. Likeable characters all around. Kingpin back. You got Lalo from Better Call Saul in there. It's, it's just fun. I really loved it. So She-Hulk. Just ended last week. I enjoyed it. Episodes with Daredevil, super enjoyed it. But I'm gonna have to put She-Hulk at mid-tier. I don't think it's better than Miss Marvel and the other MCU shows. Definitely not bad. I enjoyed it, but I didn't wake up every morning going, oh, new She-Hulk episode, yes! Like I did with Hawkeye. <laughs> and WandaVision, and Loki, and Moon Knight. I, I just think they could have made it a bit more gripping, I'd say. I think it's decent for what it is, just a fun little casual viewing experience, but I don't know, I really like her character. Just very mid to me, not bad. I really like the Daredevil episode and I like She-Hulk as a character, but I don't know, maybe season two will be a bit more gripping. All right, before we go, let's just take one last look at the tier list in God tier. Boom, we got Infinity War, then we got Guardians 2, then we got Civil War, then we got Ragnarok, then Iron Man, then Endgame, then Winter Soldier, followed by No Way Home. In the top tier, Guardians 1, Homecoming, Far From Home, Age of Ultron, Avengers 1, Shang-Chi, WandaVision, Loki, Moon Knight, Hawkeye. In high tier, Captain America the First Avenger, Ant-Man, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, Iron Man 3, Eternals, Miss Marvel. Mid-tier, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Iron Man 2, Thor, Black Widow, Multiverse of Madness, Love and Thunder, Falcon Winter Soldier, She-Hulk. Then low tier, we have Incredible Hulk, Thor, and What If. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this kind of setup. It's got nothing to do with ice cream, but I'm trying to do a little bit more these days. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, drop a like. If you don't like any of my picks, drop a dislike. It helps either way, believe it or not. So drop a comment if you have anything to say. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Mr. Cones out.